What is going on, everybody? It's Josh Wilson and back in the studio at the Big Dog Podcast. And I'm really, really excited about today. Of course, I've got my man, Jonathan Mack, in here with me. What's up, Jonathan? Nothing much. Just hanging out. Nice. You're always just hanging out. Yeah. It's pretty much the solid operating mode. Just, I need to get to that mode. That needs, Hanging out just needs to be, when you leave me soon, it's just going to, that's going to, I'm going to take it on for you. When people are like, Josh, what's going on? What are you up to? It's like, man, I'm just hanging out. And this morning, I'm just hanging out with a longtime friend of mine. Um, we got this on the books maybe two months ago. We've probably been talking about it for a year. Yep. And my brother here runs a very disciplined and tight schedule. And so um took us a little bit to do it. But, man, I'm really excited. I got my buddy Rodney, the tank the micro machine now Mosley in studio with me and guys, the stuff you're about to hear that we're going to walk you through is just going to blow your mind. And I'm so excited for, for what my guys got going on right now. We're going to jump into those things, but tank, thanks for coming down. You made the drive down to, to come and sit face to face. We could have done this on zoom, but we're like, no, let's get in the studio. Yeah, that's it, man. Thanks uh, for having us. And uh, when we, when we started talking about putting this on the books, like, to be serious about it. Uh, that was one thing that was going to be important to me was come down and, you know, check out the spot that you're at. Cause I haven't been out here yet, but yeah. also to be face to face and um, just do it in person. Yeah. It's awesome to be face to face because we, for, so you guys have a little bit of an understanding here. Uh, Tank and two other friends of ours, we talk uh, 40, 50 times a day uh, via text. This group chat has been going on now at this point for what, seven years. Got to be I at mean, least seven. It, it's insane. Um, and hopefully, you know, Apple doesn't keep all historical records of everything that's come through. That, that would be bad. That thread. But um, this has been an ongoing conversation for at least seven years. And, you know, these these three guys who are on this this thread with me, I would consider three of the closest people in my life. I know that any one of them I could text or pick up the phone. If they see my name pop up on their phone and it's ringing, they're going to answer it. And I see them every couple years face to face. That's the reality of it. But we talk nonstop. We know what's going on in our personal lives with each other. Uh, we know about our families. We celebrate wins. We support through losses. And, you know, it's, it's one of those rare uh, relationships and a lot of people, you know, out of sight, out of mind is how they function relationally. And this is one of those deals. It's just always such an interesting dynamic to me is that literally I never see you, but I know you and I know what's going on with you and you know, I got you and I know you got me and that's a, a pretty awesome thing. So the fact that you came down and this is one of those rare opportunities where we get to be face to face, I'm just so excited when you walked into my office, you got here a little early, it, you know, so it was a surprise, which is no big deal. I just, I was expecting you, but just when I turned around, I'm like, there's my dude. Cause I don't think I've seen you in two years. No, it's actually, it's been three. I was thinking about this on the way down. The last time I saw you was when you dropped Leo off. Was that the last time? To us in Fredericksburg behind Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Holy crap. So three years. Yeah. And you came down with the van that was, um, the blue and orange one, the colorful one instead of the blacked out. Yeah. Yeah, I was a little more vibrant back then. You were. We've definitely gone dark since then. <laughs> I think it looks great. <laughs> Everything. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's the beast that we call it. Yeah, so that colorful van, so funny. So the car market, as you know, has been crazy the last couple of years with COVID and everything. One of my trainers actually wrecked that van, like hit a post leaving a gas station and caved in the side of that van. All right. It still drove fine. So we drove it, all this mess. I sold that van in March for more money than I bought it for four years ago with the side caved in and 50,000 miles on it. That's great. So I'm like, yeah, that van's got to go. Cause we're going, I'm like, do I want to sell this thing or do I want to rewrap it? So it's on brand. Like, oh no, we'll sell it. The market's crazy. So we'll get rid of it. Upgrade baby. We did. We did upgrade too. And speaking of upgrades, you've done a little upgrading over the years. So what's been going on with you? Because it, people want to talk about how they're disciplined and like, I'm disciplined in a lot of areas, but I'm not a hundred percent disciplined because there's areas of my life where I don't practice it. And I'm just going to jump right in. Cause you'll, you share 
everything. So I'm just going to ask a question. I'm going to give everybody a starting point. What was the heaviest weight that you know of that you were at? So six years ago, I was 394 pounds. Um, I was in a 4XL shirt and a size 56 pants. Okay. Currently, where are you? What did you send me this morning? So this morning's check-in with my coach, I'm at 201. Okay. And I am uh, roughly 17 days out from my first bodybuilding show. Hell yes. Um, and it's been a... So we started prep for this show at 20 weeks. Yeah. Um, it's been, it has been, uh, quite the journey. It's been quite, uh, the experience starting six years ago, uh, as a dog trainer, I was 394 pounds one day in Joey Z's front yard. Yep. Um, a vendor brings up a Malawa. <laughs> We're demoing him in his front yard because Joey says, Hey, I'm going to need somebody to help me work this dog. Yeah. Uh, for demos and stuff. So come over, learn. And in the Marine Corps, 20 years ago, I was, I spent some time at our kennels. So I was familiar with, you know, the working dogs, but um, I wasn't a handler. So in his front yard, I threw on the bite suit, which is a protective suit that keeps basically from being punctured. Right. But back then I was so fat that the larger suit they brought with them. Yeah. It, I mean, it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even go on me. Right. So it was very embarrassing, um, but I was able to slip my arm into one of the sleeves of that suit top. And um, when I took the first bite from uh, D2, yeah. Diesel, um, Joey's dog, Joey and Kelly's dog, I instantly fell in love with it. Uh, as neurotic as it sounds, it, it instantly did something for me. Yeah. And I just knew that I fell in love with it, but I also made the decision right then and there in his front yard that... I wanted to learn it. I wanted to be the very best at it. Yeah. And I was going to do whatever it took to be that good. Yeah. And uh, that day I left his house, went and signed up for a gym, started this, uh, this, this journey, which the journey wasn't for bodybuilding. It was sure. to just be a good decoy, decoy, decoy instructor. Yeah. Um, and over the process, it's been, you know, when you're that big, you can't go and jump on a fad diet right. and lose a bunch of weight because it'll either come back tenfold. Uh, you'll, you'll experience a lot of loose skin in certain areas because yeah. how big you were and the skin is somewhat elastic, but when it's that big and you shrink it down a lot, you're going to have some issues. Um, luckily because of how long the process took me, I was able to lose some weight, build some muscle, lose some weight, build some muscle. Uh, so we took this process very slow. Um, and as of right now, like you see pictures, I, I think I send you and the group more pictures of me and my uh, mankini that I got to wear on stage than probably yeah. anybody. Yeah. Um, I have a folder dedicated to those pictures. Yeah. Yeah. It's favorite. It's screensaver. Let me uh, see. If well, I just took it off because I didn't want to be awkward if uh, my phone lit up, but it was a screensaver till an hour ago. <laughs> but as, as you've seen in the pictures, it's very, very minimal. Um, yeah. And it's something that uh, hopefully after this show that I do and I, I, and I rebound from it and start to try to put on some more uh, muscle, it'll help even tighten that skin up even yeah. more. Um, but that process has been roughly about six years. The commitment to, you know, um, myself was like, we were talking in your office. I hit a point in my life where I realized if I wasn't happy, yeah. I can make nobody else happy. Right. Um, so I, I kind of had to be selfish a little bit and start to focus on myself. Um, because when you're that big or when you have those issues, you know, it, it leads to health issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I'm not around, I can't take care of my family. I can't be there for my friends. Yeah. Uh, so all those, all those things went through my head, all those emotions went through my head. And it was one of those things that when I just set my head, when I, when I set the course, that's the course, Yeah. you know? And so, uh, I'm in studio now at 201 pounds. The goal is to get down to 197 and compete at the uh, light heavyweight. Nice. So I'll be at the top of the weight limit for light heavyweights. Yeah. I'd, I, and I would be under 20 pounds less than the next guys above me. Right. So I want to be at my biggest for my category and right. the littlest for mine. So nice. that's why we're going to go with the light heavyweight. So it legit was the dog bite. Because that's when I've talked to people about this. Because I talk about you all the time with with friends of mine um 
if people are struggling with some stuff and and even for me like it, you're you're my example when i try to hype myself up i'm like get on the treadmill tank talk you're like get, you know tread talk with tank like get on get on get on the treadmill you like go do this and you know and i, I talk about it all the time and you'll send me a picture and i'll, I'll say katie look at tank because katie's been with me so long and, and she's followed on social media she's connected with a lot of the off-leash folks you know, from, from afar, even though she just met you this morning yep. for the first time, she knows who you are and about you. And, and I talk about you and share, and I'm like, Katie, look at tank. And she's like, Holy crap. I'm like, and maybe like two or three weeks ago, I'm like, this mofo has abs, <laughs> like legitimate abs. And I'm like, Katie, look, so she's probably seen second your pictures as far as like me showing it because i'm so damn proud of you and you know it, nick had talked about this morning uh he had mentioned pride and just because he understands the discipline and the the strength that it's taken to to get this far and you're not done yet right there's you still have goals and you i'm sure you probably have goals for after this show you know what what's next that you want to do and focus on but it's it's just an incredible thing. And then I've always told people, they're like, well, what happened? What happened to have him do this? I'm like, he got bit by a dog. And they're like, what? I'm like, decoying. When, Because I remember all of a sudden it was this decoy thing. And you were running with it. And you're going and learning and, and spending time with, with people. You're doing seminars. You're, you're learning from some friends of ours, Cody. You know, you're some of the best in the business. You're putting yourself in those rooms or fields or buildings, if you will, to learn and develop. I was like, this guy has fallen in love, They're like fall in love with getting bit by dogs. I'm like, yeah, kind of. But, but from the outside looking in and correct me if I'm wrong, I felt like you fell in love with the development of the dogs and what those dogs in turn can do to help their handlers. Yeah. Cause you're working with a lot of law enforcement, a lot of military and stuff. So, so what was it about that bite that triggered, you know, the, the, the change to, to be completely honest with you? Um, we all have skeletons in our closet. We all have past traumas that we deal with. And in that moment, when I took the bite, all of it went away. Wow. And so, um, yes, I've, I've absolutely fallen in love with the process of help build the dogs. You know, there's no greater feeling than getting, a text message at three o'clock in the morning from somebody that you travel to in another state and say, Hey, you remember that time you jumped in the dumpster in the dark and we sent the dog and taught them how to do that. And you fought them. And you know, uh, the training evolution was very successful. Well, that happened tonight for real. And because of that, I'm going home to my family. Like yeah. there's no greater reward, uh, than that. So the bite itself did something for me yeah, mentally and physically. And then the process, um, is definitely, it's very comparable to what I fell in love with. Um, I just, I felt like I found my calling, you know, like, you know, I used to fish yeah. professionally and I thought nothing would ever surpass that. Right. Until I got into training pet dogs and then decoying. And then I was like, I can go decoy today or I can go out on the river. I chose decoying. Yep. And that happened a couple of times. I'm like, you know what? I found my passion. Yeah. That's I cool. found my calling. And um, from there, you know, things like, being asked to come back to Quantico and help some of their junior Marines. Right. You know, and, and it comes full circle where I'm showing up to the kennels that I used to go up to <laughs> uh, when it snowed and we'd be hanging out there because nothing was going on base over 20 years ago to where now I'm going back there for a reason. Yes. Yeah. To help the junior Marines be better handlers, to help their dogs be better um, working dogs and them to be better as a team. Yeah. So, that, you know, because of the communication has to be very clear between the handler and the dog. We don't want to cause conflict. Um, so we're working out all those issues that um, we observe yeah. and, and work on. So I, f I fell in love with what it did for me, but also equally the part of the process and, and just being able to travel the country and help teams and, and work in scenario based training with some other um, uh, companies that are out there that they saw the same amount of time that I put in right. traveling and learning from Bob Salamini, Jason Davis, um, you know, guys that Nick would say, Hey, I need, I, I think you should go work with this person. Um, and on my own dime, right. you know, put myself there and get the shit beat out of us for three or four days. Right. 
Um, and now, you know, for, for Virginia, I'm one of the, um, I think I'm the only civilian instructor for the Virginia Police Canine Association okay. uh, that is certified to actually certify decoys, oh, okay. uh, which is really huge. It's helped us bridge a lot of gaps between civilian and law enforcement. Yeah. Uh, Cause several years ago, law enforcement didn't want to work with just straight civilians. Right. You know, um, old head departments stuck in their ways. Uh, you know, what can this civilian do for me or, you know, the liability factor. Um, so not just myself, but a big group of civilians that are out there bridging these gaps have made a huge impact around the country. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. Can you talk a little bit about, um, I think a lot of our listeners, so this is the big dog podcast, but it's not a lot of dog people that necessarily listen. We got a lot of entrepreneurs, um, business people, salespeople, um, Mamu, what's up, Mamu? Hope you're doing well. You know, she's always listening or watching on YouTube. She's one of our three watchers, Jonathan, um, on YouTube. <laughs> that number's up. That number's up. I'm being humble. Anyway, we have five. So, um, you know, but a lot of them don't know anything about the dog world. And when they think of a decoy, if they even have an idea of a decoy, I think they're like, oh, I've seen that. It's where the, the guy's in that funny suit and he lets the dog bite them. Yep. It, it's an art. And when I've, when I watch you decoy and see the stuff that you do and a couple other friends of mine, it is so next level. Like there's decoying. And when you talk about scenario based things, can, can, can we take even back another step? Can you talk about why decoying is important? Like it, people think, Oh, this is a police dog. This thing's just highly trained and it's going to do anything no matter what and all that stuff. And that's really not the case. So can you talk about the importance of decoying and, and what that does for agencies, for that dog, for that handler and why you've maybe even taken it to a next level with the scenario stuff and why that's important. You touched a little bit with the dumpster example, but I don't want people to miss out on what this really is. Yeah, I mean, um, I know we probably don't have enough time to talk about it, but I'll definitely uh, speed through it as best as I can because it is important. A lot of people just assume they see another officer in the field with a sleeve. The dog runs down, bites the sleeve, guy gives them the sleeve, and, oh, you know, that's usually right. how the demos work and stuff like that. A lot of your listeners and watchers have probably seen more failed deployments around the country. Sure where officer either hits a button on his um, vest to pop the door open for the dog says, Hey, get him, Sparky. Yeah. And Sparky just like, Hey, you know, <laughs> no engagement. Right. Doesn't know what to do. Um, those are dangerous. That's right. how guys get killed. Yeah. Um, that's how bad guys get away. Um, so from the decoying perspective, first of all, the suit, everybody also, may have seen the guy running down in what we call the marshmallow suit or the mm -hmm. Michelin man suit. It's right. this really, really big puffy suit. We're trying to eliminate that suit because when that dog's mouth is on something that fluffy, right. the fixation of them biting is there, but they don't potentially know what's underneath that suit. So maybe yep. they've never felt a bone or maybe they've never felt liquid in the dog's mouth once making a bite. So right. if that dog is chasing someone through a house or searching a house to find a bad guy. And that bad guy grabs his pillow off his couch and puts it in the dog's mouth. And that dog closes his mouth says, Hey, I won. Cause that's the same thing we do at training. Right. Comes out the house looking for dad. Like, Hey, look at me. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I kicked his ass. I won. <laughs> Got the couch um, cushion. So we're trying to eliminate that. So the suits that we wear uh, are demon a, and they're made in Spain. Uh, they're custom fit. Okay. And I, I personally wear the lightest weight, meaning um, the padding. Yes. And so I wear uh, a competition suit, which is 31 pounds, very little padding. Underneath that, um, to, to save myself to be able to train for several days, I wear gauntlets. So it's a, think of a wetsuit, mm -hmm. just part of it cut off to go over my bicep and my forearm, because after a couple of days, it'll just look like ground beef. Right, right? yeah. And so one thing that I preach and emphasize on during these courses that we teach guys to come out and do this is physical fitness is important because if I can't give the last dog of the day, the same I gave the first dog, right. I'm taken away from them. Yep. If I'm not smart and protecting myself while trying to teach these dogs, 
right? And I let myself get beat up because it's cool to post a picture on Instagram of all my bruises. Right, yeah. Well, it gets so sore and tender that now I don't give that last dog the same thing yeah. because it hurts like hell, mm -hmm. right? Um, so we wear a 31-pound suit, Demon A, um, and it's competition weight. And essentially all that it does is prevent punctures. Yeah. And it doesn't always prevent punctures because I've got some here. <laughs> right. here. Yeah, it happens, seen, right? I've seen some um, mishaps. But it's so that a way the dog can feel the human sure. in the suit. So if he bites my bicep, I want him to be in a full mouth grip, meaning I want his molars yeah. applying the pressure. You feeling this right now, Jonathan? You right. hearing this? <laughs> well, we can let him do it. We brought Hammer. He's out in the car. Can we get so you in a suit, Jonathan? You want, um, you want to get in a suit? Why not? Hey. Oh, wait, really? Yeah, sure. I mean, oh, not hell me, yes. Not we'll we'll run the, we'll get this on video. We'll add it to the, for real. Hammer will oblige. You got you Hammer with you? Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah. We don't need to get it on video per se, but I do. No, no, this will be good. We'll get at least pictures. <laughs> yeah. Hit record. All right. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, so full mouth grip. Uh, that's something that we're uh, assessing in the dog. Yeah. He's only biting on his canines. Not good because if that bad guy rips away, it breaks canines, right, hurts absolutely. the dog, all that stuff. So everything that we're doing is intended to make the dog the best weapon that he can be, yep, right? Absolutely. Uh, to be the strongest, to, to, to not be vulnerable. Um, so I've got a TikTok video of a dog that I put on my bicep, and I got a Mountain Dew bottle that's empty, and it's water. Mm -hmm. I caught a lot of hell about that. People thought I was dumping Mountain Dew on the dog, but it's water. Yeah. So I put him on the bite, and I dump water on his head. Yep. Because you're telling me a bad guy is not going to be hitting the dog to get him off or right. grabbing yeah. whatever he can to try to get the dog off. Yeah. So essentially decoying is taking snapshots mm -hmm. and building that for the dog so that they don't yeah. see it the first time the night of the incident or the yeah. day of the incident. Yeah. So um, say I get on the hood of a car and I want the dog uh, to come bite me on the hood of the car. We build it as a process. So I need to teach the dog to get on the hood right from the hood up the windshield and now be comfortable to take a bite elevate it right um and then from there we just keep building on it yeah so there's always a process to it it's funny the similarities between that and <laughs> teaching the six-month-old golden doodle how to deal with distractions and yep. heal in place and the um things. and to be completely honest when i pull up to a training field or i pull up to a building that a department has before I say hello to anybody, I get out and I start observing. Yeah. What do we have? I put myself in a mindset of what would a bad guy do? Sure. Yeah. Right. So um, I've pulled up and there's been a backhoe somewhere. Right. And I'm like, we're going to use that mm -hmm. because that is crazy farmer Ted. Yep. That went down the middle of the street because he was drunk. <laughs> oh, and I, I envision all these cops really slow behind him. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And he won't come out. So they have to send a dog in yep. to extract him. Right. Well, if that dog has never seen that before, absolutely, there's a great chance that he probably won't engage that yeah. that guy. Yeah, the water and the pour in the water and stuff like that. Because that's the other thing too. You know, to your point, it's like the dog needs to feel bone. The dog needs to feel the the muscle and how that feels in the mouth. The, there needs to be liquid somewhere because here's the deal: the right dog gets a hold of the bad guy, he's gonna leak. Yep. It's that's the reality of it. And if that's a foreign thing to the dog, right? You know, and, and you don't have to leak for the dog to learn that moisture when you commit is 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 something that's gonna happen. And so the the, the training that I've seen you do over the years it is just really incredible because it was my first real exposure. I never I knew what decoin was, but I never really started paying attention to it until I started following you go through that process. And what you did years ago as a rookie decoy to where you are now as one of the, of the top people is really incredible because the skill set has developed, but as your skill set has developed in turn, so has the ability of what these dogs are able to do in the field. And to the point you made, I don't want people to miss is this saves law enforcement's lives. Yep. And when that dog is able to go, if that, if that dog makes a, a bite and Oh, that's weird and backs off or if the dog gets hit by a bad guy because if you've, you've seen it on tv you know when the bad guys get bit they don't just lay there and be like oh no they start fighting they're kicking they're throwing stuff and the dog has to understand oh the guy swings at me and he runs trying to jump back in the car something bad is about to happen so 
I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to try not to cry. Um, but one of our Virginia State police officers um, up north had a shepherd named Duke. Uh, we lost Duke last May uh, to a separate incident of what I'm going to tell you. But uh, my personal opinion, I, I feel like it was related to a bite that happened prior to this incident, literally several days, a week maybe before this uh, incident. And I'm going to explain to try to put it in perspective. But um, Jesse is on a high-speed chase behind a motorcycle. They get off the main road. They're on these back roads, rocky. Uh, and this guy's, you know, 120 miles an hour. He's doing everything possible to get away from Jesse. Yeah. Um, he, wind up, he, wind up, he winds up getting turned around. And as he's trying to turn around and come back, Jesse kind of cuts him off, and he has to, like, drop into this field. And when he does, the motorcycle hits a big rut, mm -hmm. big tractor rut. Guy flips over the handlebars, flies, like, 25 feet in the air. And how fast things happen, to put in perspective, the guy hit the ground, yanked his helmet off, and was already starting to run at Jesse. Jesse barely, barely, barely got out of his door. And when he saw what was going on, he popped his door to Duke. Yeah. And Duke launched from the front of his hood okay. to bite the guy. Wow. That's how fast he closed the distance. Okay. The guy who just flew off of a motorcycle. Yes. Uh, he was uh, all of 6'3", six, 6'4", six, uh, convicted felon. They found a magazine. They never found the weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, but at some point, he separated them, um, was going to go back to jail for a long time. Yeah. And Duke disabled that guy long enough for Jesse to think um, clearly. Yep. Because um, I've had a conversation with him that if it was anybody else, that suspect would have been shot sure. from his approach. Um, any other canine handler. Because Jesse's very experienced. Jesse knows his dog. He knows yeah. that we've done very similar scenarios to that. And he knew that he could rely on his dog. Uh, whereas a younger canine handler that doesn't have that experience because they don't get to train right. with decoys and scenario-based training, uh, the outcome probably would have been different. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's why it's important that we train and that the decoy brings the best of the dog to build them up, making sure that... They always win right? Um, so that they are successful. Um, but that's also why when we show up to training, we're thinking like bad guys. What would yeah. they do? Yeah. Um, and so that was, that was one of those moments where when you realize how close and the proximity of that guy and how fast he closed that distance, had Duke not been there, mm -hmm. had Duke not had the training that he had constantly because – Jesse's a very proactive, amazing canine handler. And he, yeah. like he trains on his days off. I've met Jesse at three o'clock in the morning because we're both bored. And he says, hey, I'm working. What are you doing? I say, well, I'm going to go ditch my truck. Right. Y'all come find me. Yep. I go for a mile track. And at the end, he gets a bite and I'm yep. hiding under a bus or I'm, you know, I've backtracked and done all this. So um, that's how important it is. Yeah. And, and that's one of those stories where had Duke failed to engage, right? And just yeah. wanted to run around like the guy was playing in the field. That would have been a bad day. Yeah, there's a lot of really not good uh, um, additional potential results that could have come of that yep. for the suspect and for Jesse. Yep. So e even though that was a that guy was bad and in the wrong, yeah. instead of him being six feet under, yep. all he did was take an ambulance ride to the hospital, right? get some stuff sewn up, and back was to able jail. to back and go. Yeah. So... Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's how important this real stuff is, you know, with the dogs. And again, when you made the point that a lot of stuff people see and hear about are failed deployments, and that can mean a multitude of things, um, you know, and then you have the dog. I mean, a failed deployment can be the dog committing, but that dog not releasing, <laughs> you know, also there's so much to the training that goes into it. It's not just the dog's ability to commit, but it's also that handler's ability to control the dog post. Oh yeah. And Especially it, with being 2022 and there's, you know, camera phones everywhere yeah. and uh, the liabilities of those things. And, and when we train dogs, 
a lot of people just think, oh, you train attack dogs. No, these dogs that should be on the street that are certified are taught from a very young age to target. Yep. There's very specific spots that they are allowed to bite. There's mm-hmm. very specific, specific, specific spots they're not allowed to bite. Right. And we spend a lot of time doing that. We, yeah. we spend a lot of time teaching targeting um, or getting the dogs comfortable being in those targeted areas uh, and working on them not being in the no bite zones. Um, so it's also, it's also my way of giving back to the community. Yeah. You know, that's one thing that I do. Um, I don't charge law enforcement. It's, it's my thing. Um, so when I get guys say, Hey, you know, can you come out for training day tomorrow? Yeah. Yep. Tell me where this is what we're going to do. Um, and I've gotten myself to a position where some of the most senior guys with canines trust my ability to make decisions based off of what we're going to do scenarios. So right. uh, it's really cool. The interactions I have with all my guys up North where, Hey, this is the location. They know I'm going to get there 30 minutes early so I can walk around. Right. And they're like, all right, what the hell is tank going to come up with today? <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. But they love that because it's not the routine stuff. It's yep. not go stand in the field, put the sleeve on. Right. Let's get credit for training. Here's your 40 yard deployment. Right. No guys want that stuff because good. they don't want to be in that same position. Yeah. And if they are, they want to know that they can rely and trust their partner. I love it. It's, it's huge. Um, it's really, really a big deal. You, you talked about the, you, you give that time, you know, to law enforcement, you don't charge. Um, that's one of the things with you that I've seen over the last several years is uh, service. Like I know I could, I can count on you. I know that you would do anything for me, but I feel like what I've noticed from the outside looking in is this um, servant's heart of, of yours, you know, to where I want to help. I want to, um, to share what I'm, what I'm doing. Uh, It's not a, for me thing. It's like, I've been through some shit and everybody still deals with shit. I mean, every day you get up and you have to make the decision that you're going to stay committed to your routine and what you need to do that day and what the objective is. That's not just some things become autopilot, but every day you have to make that commitment to do it. And it's the way that you um, put a lot of uh, content out where you're sharing things that you've gone through or that you're dealing with you know, that does, that is a serving piece. A lot of people will, not a lot of people, some people will interpret things as um, like, oh, this mofo just likes to see himself or whatever. There's always those people, right? Yep. I get them in my inbox. Well, I did get them in my inbox. Yeah. Cause I know you've taken a step back from a lot of that stuff too. Yep. Um, but I don't want you to miss the part where there's a far greater number of people and I know you've had people reach out to you and tell you, Hey man, I appreciate you. Hey man, you've got me motivated to do X, Y, or Z or, or Hey, seeing what you've made the commitment to be dedicated to getting yourself healthy. It has caused me to realize there's changes I need to make in my life. And it might not even be health related. Just, I can be disciplined also and make some changes in my life. And, and I appreciate it. I know there's people that reach out and say those things too, but typically in life, unfortunately, there's always more vocal people who are shitty towards us than there are the people that are like, uh, a supportive or encouraged. Tell me about it. <laughs> and so I just want you to know that, man, like we all know people are always watching. Right. And, but, and people may not be saying it, but it motivates and it inspires. Um, because <laughs> what you've done is so incredibly difficult and there's really two things. There's a lot of things that you've done over the last several years, but there's two things that are incredibly difficult that, that I just find incredibly inspiring. One, your fitness journey. Okay. It's well beyond weight loss at this point. You lost a lot of weight a long time ago. You changed your life from a health standpoint years ago. This is a fitness journey. Now this is not a weight loss thing like this. This is a totally different ball game, brother, that, that you're, you are showing us. It, it blows my mind. But then there's also this development piece as, as this decoy and how you serve and help that's just been incredible because those are two very taxing things. And I know that there's seasons where it's like, hey, I'm real dialed in right now in the gym. I'm focused on this competition right now. These last five months, that has to have my focus. So there's probably a lot less decoying going on. Um, and maybe I'm wrong in that, but I feel like something always has to, to give and take. But the decoy that you're going to be able to be 
when you're off show prep from this new version of yourself that you've built is going to come back tenfold to help develop greater dogs. So I think all that's great. And what you're doing for the community and law enforcement is amazing. Let's throw all that in a box. For you, Tank, you said I had to find my joy. I had to be happy or I can't make anybody help happy, right? How do you maintain that on the days where it's just a shit day? or it's a shit week, or it's a shit couple weeks, right? Like, talk about that, because there's people who are going to be listening and watching this who are like, or they're going to see, because, I mean, I think you'd be fine if I threw some before and afters on there and oh, stuff like this or this. It's like, people are going to see, it's like, damn it. Like, because they're going to they're gonna see themselves as that before picture, because there's plenty of us out there. And they can see where you're at now and what you're doing. And, you know, I want... The practical thing is what do you do when it's hard to stay on it? Because I'm sure at 396 or 394, whatever it was on the process of getting there, because that was a process also, because I've battled that process during my life. There were plenty of these moments, you know, so how do you keep now six years of not that yo-yo, but when it just sucks, how are you fighting through that and staying on it? So I, I think to answer your question, I try, I finally stopped bullshitting myself and I adapted the true lifestyle, the diet, which, you know, when we talk about diet, if I told you I'm dieting right now, you'd be like, oh my God, rabbit food, this rabbit food. Dude, I eat basically three Chipotle bowls a day and two shakes. Yeah. That's a lot of food. That's a lot of food. And that's while I'm 18 days away from <laughs> right. my co- and matter of fact, my coach sent me last Tuesday and said, go have a five guys burger and a bag of fries. I saw that. <laughs> so that we can jumpstart your metabolism again and have a big jump in the morning. Right. So it, I just, I just kind of took on the, the, the motto or the quote, like today versus someday. Yeah. Stop bullshitting yourself. Um, when it gets tough, I find something that, you know, really bothers me. And that's when you'll see me working out in the gym without headphones because I'm focused on something else. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the gym therapy, um, but probably the biggest Josh is a while back, I started actually talking to a therapist, Yeah. you know, and it's the absolute best money I've ever spent in my life. Um, and because I know, well, when I reach out to you guys, I know I'm not getting anything sugar coated. Sure. There's no Willy Wonka's in our, in our, (laughs) in our group. Right. But there are people in your corner that are yes men. Yep. And if you have that, they're setting you up for failure. Agreed. Because they're always giving you what you want to hear. Yeah. So I knew going to a therapist and putting it all out there, I'm going to hear the right. Yeah. Not what I want to hear. Um, so spending time speaking to a therapist, um, quick pull around the table therapy, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, sure. there we go. Yeah. yeah we're at a hundred percent around so, the table. So, <laughs> um, and I think, you know, I, I just think it, um, it helps tremendously yeah. having that, having that person that, um, is biased and really hitting the root cause of certain things that are going on sure. in your life. Um, and again, just not telling you what you want to hear. Um, but when it gets tough, man, I just, I just look towards my goals, you know, mm-hmm. and I, and I have goals of where I want to be. And, you know, I, I just stay the course and I, I reflect back on, I reflect back on those messages that I get that say, Hey, because of you, this is what I'm doing because yeah. of this, you know, I just got one yesterday from a, a, a guy that I know and said, Hey, you know, I told you, you got me motivated a couple months ago because then I'm, I'm down 50 pounds. I yeah, just want to awesome. check in. That's cool. The greatest I've ever felt. I'm like, there's nothing more rewarding than that. Yeah. And it's, you're absolutely right earlier. What you said, I've had people go, stop just posting to see yourself and you know, all this. At one point I did let that get to me, but then I took into consideration that there were way more people thanking for the motivation. Mm -hmm. You know, the reason why I started treadmill talk a long time ago was to hold myself accountable, but also 
to bring a lot of people in the canine world together yep. and make those connections and shine light on those. Just like you said, you wanted to shine light on me and have yeah. me in this studio. So, um, I, I just try to give back. Um, there, there's another quote that my buddy, Brandon, um, Polnick told me a long time ago, man, it just, it stuck with me so long, but it was inspiring others to inspire others to inspire. Yeah. You know, so once you get that ball rolling and you start showing some results, you start, you know, um, being motivated or being happy versus negative, negative, right. negative. Cause that's another reason why I shut down my social media leading up to this prep was I just wanted to starve the distractions mm -hmm. and feed the focus, yep. you know, and it's, you, you hop on Facebook or you hop on something. And like Nick has told us recently, it's most of it's fake. Yep. They're showing you only what's best, right? In that given moment, or it's all negative. Yeah. Right. And so where I'm at the best spot in my life right now, I don't need any of that. Yeah, that's good. I don't I don't need any of that, you know, weighing on me um while I'm making these decisions. I don't need that making my decision to not want to go to the gym even more. Right. Right. Like, no, I put that to the side and I know I have a task in hand and I just look towards the future and that goal and what I got planned and what I want to do and you know, I, I can already see myself on stage uh, looking the very best I've ever, even when, even when I was in the Marine Corps 20 years ago, right. I didn't look the way I look now. No. Um, two weeks ago, I went clothes shopping for a wedding that we had and the pair of slacks that I bought were smaller than the last set of slacks that were issued to me in the Marine Corps over 20 years ago. <laughs> and that just blew my mind. When you like, showed that picture of you in the Marines and it's just this scrawny little kid, yeah. right? I'm like, no, nah, man, it's a totally different. It, it's a totally different thing. Yeah. That's so crazy. That's smaller. Jonathan, what did you tell me last week when we were talking about LA brother? What, what was the, the quote you said to me about the, the vision when I was talking about distractions and things out there in LA? Uh, just the the vision's greater, the mission's greater. Yeah. The vision is greater, the mission is greater. And um, when you when you said what you said, and that reminded me of last week's conversation with him, because when you are <laughs> when you're pressing, right, like you're working towards something greater, it is it is <laughs> it's incredible incredible to me the level of distractions that the universe will throw at you. It is incredible to me. And, and for me and my belief systems, when I say universe, I mean devil, that the devil will throw at you Amen. to, to pull you off of what we talk about a lot on this show, becoming the, the greatest version of yourself. Right. And truly that's what you're working towards. My, my little brother, Jonathan, right here, that is what he is working towards. And it matters not people's agreement with what you're doing and the direction either of you are going, what it has to do with is your belief and focus on what it is that you're working towards. The vision is greater than any distraction. The vision is greater than any cost. The vision is greater than this, this temporary joy. This vision is greater than, uh, the mission is greater than, but if you don't have complete clarity on what that vision is, it'll never be greater than, and, and the distractions will get you and they will pull you away. Um, yeah, I got hit with that this year and some distractions got a hold of me earlier this year. And I mean, it me up. I mean, it, it, it really did. And, and we've had to grind and, and work our way through it and stuff. And I, I let the vision get cloudy. I let it pull me away and, and that's okay. Right. But, now I, I'm having to do cleanup to to get back on path it, to be on it. And because I, I let it get blurry. I let outside things cloud what that really was. Um, and historically, I, I don't do that. I don't care about opinions. I don't care about, about whatever. But it it's hard to stay consistent with that. And I think that's when you see people winning and they're like, oh, well, you know, this at this point, it's easy for Tank. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, like, are you kidding me? No, none of this is easy. Yep. Anything anyone's doing at a high level for an extended period of time is extremely difficult. Anybody can do anything for a moment. 
the fad diet thing you're talking about. And, you know, boom, so anybody can drop weight. Yep. To consistently work towards something, you got to have clarity. And that vision may change in two weeks. You, pro- you may already have an idea of, of what that, that vision is after that, of what you're trying to work towards. And that's great. Visions can change. That's no problem. Because I think, I think goals, visions, missions, they're steps. Like when you achieve that goal, accomplish that, that mission, that's that season. What is that next step? It's just another step up for you. If you're always working to strive and, and improve one thing we've referenced Nick a couple of times on here, but again, this is one of our individuals we talk to a million times a day. You know, it's, he, he's one of the, the best um, examples of always learning. You know, he's constantly consuming. You know, listening to audio books, watching videos of things that are, are of interest to him. And it's content, learning, 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 learning. And it's that learning. It's what you've learned about health and fitness over these years. It's what you've learned about decoin that's allowed you to get to that point, okay, where you're at now. But that's where you're at now. There's, there's nowhere to, where you're content there. You're like, yep, this is the prime for this show I'm doing. That is done. I accomplished what I set out to do with that. I may even accomplish more than I thought I was going to be able to yep. in preparation for this. Now what? Because from the outside looking in, I don't see, did, did you see this two years ago? No. You, I, I have to believe you didn't even think it was a possibility. Bro, you got a six pack. Yeah, I mean, I never, I never saw me at this level because two years ago that wasn't really in the vision. Yeah, um, it was just being the best decoy, being physically fit, so that way when I'm an when I'm an instructor and I'm asking you or telling you to do something, it's because I've done it. Yeah, or I'm willing to do it in front of you. Right. Yeah. So, um, lead by example. So if I tell you to go hop up on that hood of that car, catch the dog in a frontal, slide him off the side, and then fight him on the ground for 30 seconds is because I can do that. Yep, right? and have done it. Um, so this, you asked me, had decoying stopped? Uh, no, it hasn't. In fact, three weeks ago, I taught a week-long course what? to 14 <laughs> um, students out in Falkier County. You are such a damn beast, dude. And uh, <laughs> so the first two days that we're instructing – I had them run every morning a couple laps in their suit yeah. after lunch. Um, and at one point on Tuesday afternoon, I heard a little scuttlebutt like, wow, he's really making us run, uh, and he's just instructing. So my plan all along was Wednesday, I was going to let them watch me work. Yeah. And I worked three dogs. And between the three dogs, it was a total of like 27 minutes back to back to back. Um, and once they got done... The person that said, wow, I can't believe you're making me run, came up and was like, that was absolutely incredible. And now I know what you did and why you did it. Thanks for, you know, making it all come yeah. to fruition. So it's, again, two years ago, I just wanted to be in the absolute best shape I could be to decoy. Right. And then I got to the point, I'm like, what up? Actually, now the vision has changed. I, 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 I'm here. Now let's do this. Yeah. Right? So now let's take it to another level. Um and that was, that was actually tough because a year ago, I had to essentially get myself further along so I could actually start a prep. And so um, back in January is when I switched coaches to um, Brandon Barrow, who is up in uh, Ashburn, and he's taken over everything, my, my nutrition, my workout plan, my, my check-ins. Um, I met with him in January. And we discussed, um, you know, this show and what it would take to get us where we need to be to comfortably transition into the prep um, so that I wasn't doing four hours of cardio a day right. and all this. And, um, you know, it took him a, it took him the reason why we wanted to start together before the prep actually starts is so that he can learn things about my body, how it responds. Um, to be honest, he doesn't take on very many people. So yeah. he wanted to proof my work ethic and my ability to follow the plan. And, you know, was I just talking shit about wanting to do this or was right. I real, you know? So once he, once he felt, felt me out and, and was like, all right, this guy's about it. We're going to do this. That's when he turned it up and 
we got ourselves ready to hit that 20 week mark. And when it did, um, you know, it's been, it's been smooth sailing for us. Um, at 18 days out, I still feel, I feel like Superman to yeah, be honest. Awesome. And my buddies ask me all the time. They're like, how do you feel? Cause they've all told me like, wait till you're three weeks out and you're dead. And you know, you could barely get around and all this. Like I just, because my coach did things the right way with me. Yes. And what I need to do, um, I haven't had to be at, you know, 1200 calories a day, no right. food, no, no fuel for my body for an hour of cardio in the morning, a workout in the afternoon, the amount of steps that we get in with our pet dogs throughout the day, you know, right. averaging 22, 23,000 steps a day. Um, so it's just, it's, it's been an incredible journey, man. And one thing that I learned, uh, to backtrack about adapting to the lifestyle before I got into January, I was really busting my ass in the gym, but I was also trying to outwork a diet. Mm -hmm. So for example, maybe I was 75, 25, um, 75 clean, you know, bullshit here and there yeah. a couple nights a week going out, social drinking and social eating with friends, stuff like that. So yeah, I would, bust my ass in the gym. And then that afternoon I'd go out and have some bad stuff. When I adapted to the lifestyle of running as close to as good as you can, yeah. right. Almost a hundred percent on a very nutritional diet. Uh, one, I found out I eat more now than I did back in the day when I was 394 pounds. Sure. Right. I eat more meals. Yeah. Uh, back then it was just McDonald's in the morning, five guys, an hour later, Burger King, an hour later. Right. Um, because of those past issues I was dealing with, Josh, it was, I turned to food, the mm -hmm. depression. It was, that was my, you know, my get out or my go-to. Um, and now I actually understand the nutritional value of food. Right. And how you can manipulate things and how I have to in this process that I'm in. But even if I wasn't prepping for a bodybuilding show, I now know how to, use those things to my advantage. Yeah. Um, and so adapting to the lifestyle has just been the biggest key. And like I said, it's, it's not bad. You know, I, I prep my girlfriend's meals for her. Yeah. Uh, she gets steak, mushrooms, asparagus, rice, uh, in a bowl and has a couple of those a day and, um, or ground chicken. So again, when you tell people you're dieting, right. Their first thought process is salad. Yep. Rabbit food, you know, uh, eating very little. Right. Uh, but essentially I'm going to, I'm making Chipotle bowls at my house. Yeah. You know, I got avocado on my first meal, my, my breakfast in the morning, I make into a shake because it would be so much food. Right. I don't have 45 like, minutes after the this. gym to sit there and eat, you know, um, 230 grams of egg whites and two whole eggs, which would be a whole plate of eggs with spinach in it. Plus this bowl of oatmeal at 80 grams of oatmeal plus with, with peanut butter in that. And it's, so I just make it all into a shake. It's it's gone right. in two minutes. Two hours later, I'm eating my next meal. Yeah. Two hours after that, I'm eating my next meal. And now I'm fueled for when I go back in the afternoon for my workout. Yeah. Right. So I do fasted cardio in the morning, um, get my meals in, get my pre workout in before um, for the gym session. Yep. And then we go in and it's wild. Smash it. So we talk about coaching a lot on the show. And I think coaching is is so under, um, valued, um, in, in all aspects of life, uh, how, wh what are the, what are the percentage percentage chances of you being where you're at right now? Had you not sought out coaching and not just sought out coaching, but sought out the right coaching. Are you here on your own? No, hell no, no. And, and to elaborate on that, I switched coaches because I switched the vision. Yep. So I had a guy that I was with for over a year and a half solely to be a better decoy. So when I would show him videos and he, and I thoroughly explained to him what I'm doing, he was basing my workouts. Yep. I remember that. a lot of core, a lot of legs, a lot of shoulder, a lot of all this stuff that we, uh, I needed to be strong in to be a better decoy. Hey, you were doing crazy movements in your workouts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, and that was catered to what I was doing, but when the vision changed, I knew that, that guy could not help me mm -hmm. become a bodybuilder because he didn't have the background. Right. Nothing against him. He just, yep. that wasn't his thing. So when I made the decision and I switched coaches, 
and I gave, I give everything. I put everything on my coach's plate. Yeah. No pun intended. Right. Sure. But he, he designed my workouts where he split up the days. Um, he addresses my nutrition. He follows up. Right. That's important. Yeah. Right. Because a good coach will follow up to you. And if you are not holding up your end of the deal and checking in and doing what you need to do, then a good coach is going to drop you. Right. Cause it's not about the money at that point. Right. It's like us with our dogs. If my trainer doesn't have the same results as myself, you Nick white has, right. It's our name. It's our reputation. Yep. Right. So same, same applies at that point. We've been working together so long that if I start making him look bad, cause I'm not doing my end of the deal, I'm making him look bad. Right. Absolutely. And he doesn't want to be associated with that. Yeah. Um, because when I get on social media and I say my coach, Brandon, people know that we're working together. So right. if I show up on stage fat, he's going to, everybody's right. going to represent him. Well, yeah, I gotta, I gotta represent him. So, um, I would not be here right now if I didn't reach out to a coach. Um, I didn't have a relationship with the coach that I have. That is, we're not friends. Like we're cool. Right. right? But yeah. we're not buddies. He's not going to yes, man, me. He's not going to do this. Like, Hey, come out here. I want to see you pose in front of me, you know, like six weeks ago, he was very happy with where we're at. And he was like, cool, you're good. Let's go. We're going to, we're going to keep doing this. Right. Um, and when I send him check-ins, you know, it's not, it's not over fluff. Right. It's, Hey, we're on point. Keep it up. Good week. Right. This is what I need you to do now. Yeah. And you know? you're not paying him to do that either. Right. Like if you, if you have, you know what the vision is, his expertise is getting people to that point. Yep. You're not paying him to tell you, Oh, you're doing great. And, he, and you're really not because then you're not going to be ready when it's time for you to do that. Now everybody's disappointed, Yep. you know, and, and his reputation would be disappointed, but him getting to tag on when he's got a killer like you, who's just out there doing it. And it's like, okay, you give me the roadmap and I'm just going to do it and execute. That's it. And if he's the expert, most of the conversation should be, oh, yeah, we're tracking. Because you're executing what the expert put in place. That's right. You're not recreating the wheel. It's like, all right, Brian, right? Is that what you said his name is? Uh, Brandon. Brandon, sorry. All right, Brandon, yeah, I got your, your uh, roadmap for me this week. Personally, though, I'm just going to do a couple more reps on the bench and – um. I just substituted it. Yeah. Well, what the, what are you paying for? Yeah. You're not paying for you to interpret. If you knew, why don't you just do it your damn self? How, how many times <laughs> have you had pet clients show up? Oh Lord have mercy. And they say, Oh, we've been doing that. Or I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Oh, so no problem. Why are you here? Yeah. Let's, let's say both our time. Right? <laughs> let's, just, let's just move on. But that, you know, it, you know, I got involved with coaching, um, you know, on the business side years ago, that's been a huge impact now, you know, on us and, and me and not just in the bit, but personally as a husband, as a father. Um, and it's, I, I think therapy is a form of coaching um, also. And I, I think people discount um, so much getting help where they're weak and help where they're struggling. And there's no new problems in this world ever. There is no any trouble you've ever ran into your life, you're not the first person to experience that. That's right. And the same for me, same for Jonathan, it, you know, it, it doesn't matter. There's someone out there who can help. Jonathan, you want to see Josh Wilson get goosebumps right now? Yeah. So since I started dating my girlfriend, there's something that is very important to us. And you know who has been my best life coach? Who's that? God. So, you know, having him back in my life has been extremely important. Yeah. Uh, he's led me to certain paths and, you know, I just felt like since we're talking about coaches, I don't think there's any more better coach than him. The playbook's there. <laughs> That's right. I've seen you back in there. So. That's awesome. Yep. People discount coaching. They discount coaching and there's coaches for every aspect of your life and um, humbling yourself to receive it, not just receive it. The first step is just finding it, seeking it out, 
knowing that you need it. Cause we, and, and that doesn't mean that we won't individually fail at, at certain things, you know, down the road and mess up. And it's like, Oh shit, I should have sought guidance. I should have sought help or that was an expensive lesson to learn or, or, ah, oh, that relationship would, those things will happen. But having the self-awareness to, to seek that guidance, to get the help when you get clarity on that vision. And I think to your point, you talked about having that happiness. It's like, I'm happy with me. You're happy with you because you're finally focused on and have clarity on what your vision is. Not everybody else's vision for tank, you know, and this is what tank should be doing. This is what tank needs to do now. No one can speak to Devin and I've been married 20 some odd years, not 20 some odd 20. And, um, she can't, she can't tell me my vision. She can't, it has to be mine. If I start working towards the vision she has for my life, we will be a statistic just like everybody else. Resentment and all yeah. that that comes and in. And it's the same. It's not yours. It's the same with her. And we talk about it often. You know, we're, we're approaching a really weird season in, in our life and relationship. You know, my son will graduate in June, which is insane. Um, I mean, you saw the pictures from homecoming last yep. weekend, man. Like, Kiki looks like a damn grown woman. You know, she's 15. I'm just trying to get her grown and I stay out of prison. Right. That's like, that's my current goal right now is get her grown and out of the house, like without me going to jail. Yep. Um, you know, Logan always looked young and then all of a sudden he's a grown man. Yeah. He's taller he, than you, right? He's six, three. Yeah. He says, I lie and say six foot. I'm like, no, I'm legit six foot. You're just a tree, son. Like you are huge. Um, but Kiki, she just went from like little kid to looking like she's in her twenties. I'm like, Oh hell, this is, this is terrible, bro. It was but, like yesterday. <laughs> It was like yesterday you sent us the video of him leaving the house for the first time in his truck to go to school. Yeah, I know. And now he's graduating. Mm -hmm. it, it's crazy. And so Devin and I talk about, you know, cause her, the way our family, our, our plan, you know, has been, she's CEO of team Wilson. You know, she, she manages the family. She manages the house, like anything that's on the personal side, like that is her business. And I don't tell her how to run that business. I don't, I get involved where she needs me to, but the reality is I don't really know a lot of things about what goes on on that personal side. And some people are like, that's freaking crazy. You should be more involved. Like, well, first of all, manage your relationship. Don't worry about managing mine. Right. This, this works out. She loves me. You know, I love her. We're cool. We don't argue a lot. It, it's it, everything's fine. You know, don't, don't manage mine, but she were in this transition period where her the last, you know, 18 years have been dedicated to team Wilson. Yep. And as the kids have gotten older, they need less of me and her. They do their own things. They become more independent. Logan just comes and goes. He's got two jobs. He's working at the golf course. So he can play golf for free. And he got certified this summer to work for us. Dude's a beast. He's just rolling, coming and going. I'm like, damn, where's my son? <laughs> you know, Kiki, she gets her permit next month. Huh? And she's real excited. Logan at least likes to hang out with us. Kiki's like, see you later. Like, I can't wait to drive. And I'm like, well, first of all, it's going to be a little different than it is with your brother because people will snatch your ass. Like, you will be gone. You will get taken, right? And I don't necessarily have a specific set of skills, but I know a lot of people that do. That's right. And I will fund finding you. Like, we will figure this <laughs> shit out. I'm like, so I know Logan just comes and goes. But you can't necessarily just do that. No one's snatching the 6'3 dude up. But you, unfortunately, that is a possibility. So there's going to be a little bit of different rules. She has a hard time with that. She's very independent. She's me. And I'm trying to slow that down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but as they transition out, you know, Devin and I talk about her. Devin starts talking about, man, I don't really know what that next thing looks like. And I throw ideas out. I'm like, oh, we could do this. We could do that. She's like, stop. I don't want to run a coffee slash wine shop, coffee house in the morning, wine, you know, bar in the evening. I, I have no desire to do that. I'm like, oh, well, you could, you could do this. Stop. It took me a while to stop doing that because I've got the ideas. Yep. But that's not her vision. That's not her passion. That's not what she's into. 
and we hit rough patches when I try to push those things and it's the exact same way. And people are like, well, Josh, you know, he travels a lot or, you know, Josh is, you know, doing this or doing that, or, you know, Josh has meetings or Josh is out with those group of people, Josh, you know, and she's like, what her friends will say stuff to, but what are you worried about? Like, yeah. Like I don't have any problems with anything. Why are you more worried? Like, than I am. Yeah. Like I don't, I remember, I remember back in the previous life, um, we had, uh, it, in the office is all women. Well, it's kind of like right now over here, you know, it's all women. And her friends would say stuff to her. Like you let Josh hire all those women and all these things. She's like, I don't have the slightest concern about any of them. And if I had a concern about them, I don't have a concern about my husband. So why would I be worried about anything? And so that's just how we operate. We don't try to push, you know, on each other. I'm the CEO of our businesses. She's the CEO of the family. And that's our agreement and not agreement, but it, it's a mutual agreement. Mm -hmm. It's not, Hey, Devin, you're going to do this. Agree to it. No. If she tells me today, and this may happen, you know, when the, the kids graduate and that's, that's her focus right now when they're done and gone. And, and she starts thinking about what that next phase looks like for her. I'm all like, what, whatever she wants. Because what she's done over these years has allowed us to build not just the family that we've built, but also the businesses that we've built. And so if she says, hey, I really am led and passionate about this. God's leading me in this direction. What do you think? I got to be cool with it. Because she's always been cool with whatever crazy ass direction. Hey, I think I'm going to quit my really good job and train some dogs. Huh? <laughs> Worked out okay. But that's because she's letting me stay focused on my vision. And I got to let her be focused on hers. That support piece in that relationship is so important. And when people start messing, trying to create, there can be a joint vision. We have that too. Oh, of course. You know, and, and both of our individual visions have to play into that to a certain extent. But there has to be clarity. And I think that clarity is where that happiness comes from. And I talked about me getting blurry earlier this year yep. and that has created angry Josh, you know, for a, a good period of time. And as I get closer back to the clear vision, ah, it's a little more set in at ease. So I'm, I just, I appreciate you so much. I honor you. Like I, I want people, I wanted people to hear from you. And I want people to see what you've been able to accomplish. Um, and I wanted people to see what extended discipline can accomplish. And it's not, to me, it's not about the fitness piece. That's the visual thing that everybody can see. That's easy. Like you're a happier dude. Oh yeah. Like you speak differently than you used to. You care about things differently than you used to. And this is the type of stuff that ex being dedicated and disciplined for an extended period of time, having clarity can get you to guys, you know, who are out there listening. It, it can be anything, your business, your family, your, your relationship with your significant other, you know, your, your health, like whatever it may be, get that clarity and get to the happy <laughs> get to the happy when you're that best version of you, you're working on getting to that best version of you. Then you can influence everybody else. Yep. But if you're just trying to give everybody this little piece of you and that little piece of you, and you're a freaking train wreck, nothing, nothing good will ever, ever come of it. So get that clarity, be selfish. It's okay to be selfish. It is. You got to sometimes. And cause there's plenty of time for people to take. <laughs> and and be generous. That will never lack. But you've got to make the 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 selfish decision to be selfish for a period of time to get yourself where you need to be and, and dialed in. And um selfishness is not a bad thing that like people like to to kind of wrap around it. So I honor you. I appreciate you. I respect the hell out of you. I'm proud of you. I love you. Like you're my homeboy. And um I know you're gonna kill it at the show 18 days is that where we're 18 out days. 18 days out um 
I can't thank you enough for coming down here and talking about stuff. How can people, um, you know, reach out to you? How can people connect with you? I know you've taken a break off social while yep. you've been doing prep and stuff, but you know, what's a good way for people to, to learn more about you, follow kind of your, your journey and stuff like that. So the best way is in, through Instagram. I, I think I spend more time there. Um, cause it's less negative, but I will be back online. I'm, I'm trickling in a little bit now. Um, just to, so some, some folks that I know are having some issues, um, selectively I'm, I'm sending them some, some messages through the little bit of trickling I've been yeah. doing. Um, but social or Instagram tank.mosley. Cool. Uh, that's my only Instagram I have. I do have decoy fitness. Sure. Uh, that's more geared towards the guys that are actually in it. Uh, we, we, we put a lot of those guys in the spotlight yeah. uh, as well to showcase them and, and open some doors uh, for them as well. Um, decoy fitness, but my primary account is tank Um, it'll be back on after the show. It's awesome. Um, but you know, I, I, I appreciate you having me down here. Um, it's like you said, it's something that we haven't seen each other in three years, but it feels like I just saw you yesterday, That's right. you know, and that's how, uh, those super solid friendships work. Um, I know that I can call you in an instant and you're there as well. And, um, I'm I'm super proud of you and being here and seeing this this empire and the the stuff we used to talk about at three o'clock in the morning <laughs> so many years ago or the yeah. you know the effort that we put in so many years ago um, to see it just paying off so well for you and um, I'm I'm happy for I'm happy for everyone that works with you or works under you because. I know the type of person you are, your character, your leadership, and I know you're rubbing off on them. I mean, we're just talking in your office about people who have left you and started a business and because they did things morally and ethically, you helped them. Yeah. And that's the type of people that we are. And that's why the four of us get along so well is because that is us. Yeah. And when you are surrounded by the right people, the sky's the limit. And I'm just, I'm, I'm so proud of you. I love you back. Thank you. And, um, you know, if there's ever anything I can do for you in the future, you know, I'm there. And, uh, let's talk about getting my man hit yeah, by a Warhammer. Jonathan, we're going to get Jonathan in a suit and we are going to, um, add that to the show and it'll be on social for sure. And you've never done this before, right? Nope. All right, cool. Um, maybe we'll get, I bet you we can get somebody over in the office to do it too. Katie did years ago. I don't know if she'll do it again. She might though. So let's see what we can get done. Um, y'all thank you for tuning in. Somebody, somebody learned something today. Somebody was helped today. Um, that heard this there. I know there was some wisdom that my boy tank shared that, that is going to help you. And if it helped you, Help somebody else, share the show, um, tag them in it on social, send a link, you know, from, from anywhere podcasts can be downloaded or played, you know, you can share those links as well. If it helped you leave a review, let us know what we can do for you and how the show has impacted you and, and, uh, follow tank on Instagram and see how the show comes up in a couple of weeks. We'll catch you next time in the big dog studio.